Hey guys, heading back from our episode with Pat Militich, UFC Hall of Famer. Um, it was a great episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. We had some technical issues where we had to use Zoom instead of our standard uh, platform. Uh, you'll see in the episode we had to uh, take a quick break and get that figured out. But beyond that, we had a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the Real Grit Podcast, where wisdom meets masculinity and culture meets authenticity. I am your host, another white dude with a microphone who knows best, Craig LeBeau. And with me, back in the saddle again, Matt, the Monts, Muncy. Welcome back, pal. Good to be here. Is your hiatus over? Yeah, for you, now. Yeah. You, yeah, you all done? Yeah. All right. And we got producer Dan in the hot seat once more. Back, back where I belong. I got all my boys back. And we have, as promised to you, our very special guest, UFC Hall of Famer, class of 2014, UFC 16 welterweight champion with four successful title defenses, Sure Dog MMA Hall of Fame. Uh, he was one of the first before mixed martial arts was really mixed to study multiple disciplines in Mai Tai, uh, karate. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, boxing. Um, and then before all these MMA gyms popped up, like ATT, AKA, the Extreme Couture, uh, and Alliance MMA. This man founded Militic Fighting Systems. One of the most dominant camps of its era and the most successful in history, producing champions in the light, middle, welter, and heavyweight divisions. His camps were the most intense, grueling camps, and that's what it takes to make a winner. He changed the landscape of MMA forever, is a titan inside and outside of the ring, Mr. Pat Militich. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for, Thanks on. for coming on, man. You're, you're a legend. That's just another way of saying old. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, so. I want to go over a little bit of the past and then jump right into the present and, and the future for you, is it, if sure. you're okay with that. Okay. Sure. Sure. So on this show, I talk a lot about personal development, what it takes to be successful, what it takes to be um, a high quality man in the world. And I understand that, um, to do what you have done, to accomplish what you have accomplished, requires some very important traits to hone. If you can go into a little bit about what it takes to be a champion and to make champions. Well, sure. I mean, ultimately, I think it comes down to, you know, the passion has to be there. Uh, there has to be some, some, I guess, athletic ability, of course, uh, but I've seen... I guess what you would consider mediocre athletes become world champions. It just comes down to uh, work ethic, passion, you know, and a uh, few other components, of course. But, you know, it's just there's got to be a burning desire that that nothing is more important uh, outside of, you know, uh, family, children, you know, spouse, whatever. Uh, but ultimately, um, you have to put blinders on to reach a level of, uh, of success, certainly in combat sports, as in to be on, unless you're born with a silver spoon and you're, you know, related to somebody in power and, and they put you in a seat of, of control, uh, which many times we see that in our society, uh, to come from the outside and be able to, to get to the top. It, it, it takes, uh, an awful lot of work and, uh, and discarding all other distractions, to be honest with you, to to get there. So that's what I definitely did to win a world title and then coach a bunch of world champs and uh, put uh, put a lot of guys on and gals on pay-per-view television and, uh, of course, the, the broadcasting part of things. But ultimately, it's it just comes down to 
no matter what, on the worst day possible, uh, sitting at home with no money, nothing in the refrigerator, uh, an injury, uh, all cards stacked against you, uh, that you still have hope and you still have faith. And so for anybody out there in life who is sitting in that situation, no matter what goal you have, do not give up. I can tell you that. Uh, because if you are persistent enough, uh, you can you can uh, you can achieve your goals. You can achieve your goals. I mean, uh, that's that's really what it comes down to. So, so that is huge. So, limit distractions, hope and faith, which are very important. Both of those things are very important. Um, perseverance, grit. Um, how many people? do you think tried to make it through your camps that just couldn't hack it? They didn't have what it took. Did that happen often? Well, I, I, yeah. I'm not sure how many, I mean, there were a lot of athletes who came from around the world to train with us and, you know, they planned on staying for four, six, eight weeks, whatever, train for a camp or just come and try it out for a week type thing to see if they fit in, yeah. you know, and uh, most of them after two or three days generally, Wow. Uh, packed their bags and and went along their way. So, yeah, because they didn't possess what it took to be great. Yeah, that that right. all those all those traits that he talked about. Dan, I can hear myself over there. Are you? Oh, is that yeah, this? You're on Zoom on your phone still. Can you fix this? Yep. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's 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 great. Um. Now. In that time, explain to me a little bit about the UFC at that time, MMA at that time, because you were on the forefront on, of a lot of change. Like I said in the intro, uh, you changed the landscape of MMA forever. forever. Um, what do you think gave you that foresight, that insight to do the things that you did to, to really take that industry by storm? Well, I think it was by um, inadequacy, to be honest with you. It was, you know, that I was a good wrestler. I was not the best wrestler. It was the recognition of being well-rounded was was going to win, you know, in the long run. Um, yeah. um, you know, I suffered from lifelong uh, respiratory disease, so I was a good athlete, but uh, could not get to the pinnacle in wrestling. Uh, just because it would just from day to day, whether I could breathe or not type yeah. situation. Now, what kind of, did you have like an asthma or like, uh, it was, uh, it was a respiratory r respiratory inflammation caused by growing up in a basement of my mother's house. Oof. Where my so mold. Was and it leaked. Yeah. It leaked constantly. Every time it rained, it was flooded. And yeah. so I lived in black mold my entire childhood. So I, I just suffered from respiratory illness, you know, yeah constantly to overcome that and do what you did is amazing all on its own yeah it's huge well it was through a lot of research that i was able to do that you know doctors didn't know what what obviously that you know how to figure it out um and you know unfortunately still now 35 years later they still don't uh allopathic medicine is not going to ever help with that situation a whole lot yep uh, so i had to do a lot of research on natural homeopathic uh substances that would take care of that and it only took once i got started on that it was only 10 days and a respiratory system went from breathing through a, a clogged mucus filled straw to uh, a giant wide open PV, uh, pvc tube and all of a sudden i was i was lim limitless in my endurance uh my strength exploded um at my recovery you know everything started changing at a very dramatic rate so that that's really what what changed everything for me uh, to be able to do that. But, you know, back in the day when the sport was frowned upon because it wasn't being, you know, the athletic commissions and the states weren't collecting any money because it wasn't sanctioned. You know, I was doing a lot of televised debates with politicians uh, and they all the politicians. So, you know, I think they just, oh, I get to talk to a dumb fighter on TV and talk about how dangerous his sport is. But, you know, I had compiled all the data on every sport possible that was going on in their in their state. And I knew what they were going to do. They were going to say, you know, this is a dangerous sport. People are going to get hurt. People are going to get killed. And I would always just eventually come back with, you know, if, if this was about safety, there would be no athletic uh, competitions in this 
representatives state at all. You know, seven kids die per year in the United States from line drives in Little League Baseball. Right. Uh, so so let's be serious here. This this has nothing to do with safety. Uh, this representative doesn't care about athlete safety. He cares about the money. Yeah. And uh, and and they would eventually have to admit they would have to admit, yes, this this is about money. And uh, then, you know, I remember one representative Boland from state of Illinois at the end of the debate goes, well, I will have to agree with everything Mr. Milicic is saying. It, it really does come down to the money. Uh, but if we could just do away with the headbutts, that would be uh, that would be great. <laughs> that, was a, that was his last grasp for, you know, legitimacy yeah. in the debate. So get, get rid of the headbutts. But yeah, yeah, which it doesn't matter if it's a if, you know, obviously within reason, um, if there are no rules, I'm defending against all weapons. Yeah. Right. So I, my, my, my defense is going to be different. You you see people get hurt with, you know, people getting kicked when they're down because they don't expect to get kicked. Right. Because yeah. it's illegal. Right? right. If 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 it's legal to kick me in the head when I'm down, I'm going to be defending it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's a, that's a good point to make, too. But I mean, you yeah. see in, in, in soccer, in American football, you see more concussion in like traumatic brain injuries in those sports, I would think, than you do in MMA. I, I yeah, certainly in football, certainly in football, yeah. uh, football's up, you know, you're, you're smashing into, uh, someone's head every day with your head or yeah. every, every play, you know, so average plays four or five seconds. It's 10 seconds max long type thing. Yeah. That's a lot of plays. That's a lot of, that's a lot of smashing your head into stuff. So. Right. Right. Um, throughout your journey in the UFC from, from your debut to your, um, to your title fight, how much time did that take for you to get to the top? My debut fight from, the first fight I had, the first no holds barred tournament I fought in, uh, from your first UFC debut, let's say. Well, that was that was when I technically won the title because it was a four man tournament. Oh, okay. So All I, right. I, I won. I won the four man tournament, so I was technically at that time the UFC champ. Yeah. And then you yeah, had, you had then you had four. Um, four you, defenses after that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's 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 awesome. That's yeah, huge. That was, it was awesome. about three and a half years, I think, something like that. Yeah. So. Great. Um, um, let's shift gears a little bit here. And uh, I want to talk about what you found to detox you from that mold and how, how you came to it, the, all the research that was involved with it, because that's something that's plaguing a lot of Americans. Um, I know it happened in my family. My, my grandparents' house was loaded with mold. Yeah. They brought in a specialist and they were like, oh, no, it's not, it's no big deal. We'll just spray some stuff here. But no, everybody got sick. Yeah. So I'm curious to know what you, uh, what you found worked. Uh, well, back then, 35 years ago, it was a combination of different antioxidants. So people can do research on, you know, plants with antioxidant properties, and then they can use the concentrated, um, you know, powder form you know there's a lot of berries with with antioxidant uh, qualities there's uh you know even uh you know kale and you know a lot of a lot of other plants uh grape grape skin grape seed you know um th- there's just antioxidant properties in a lot of different fruits a lot of different berries you know all those different types of, of greens um, that you can find out there it depends on how they're grown. Were they grown with all natural inputs, or were they grown, you know, with uh, petroleum-based fertilizers, things like that? Those are obviously not substances I want to put in my body. So very important for people to understand that. Um, so in organic, you never know anymore, right? Right. So you just yeah. don't. You're not certain. But uh, but then as time has gone by you know we've found substances that combine a lot of antioxidant properties in one uh one being a a fulvic humic acid that's derived from uh, the most nutrient-rich peat bog found in the world and that uh that fulvic humic acid is is a very unique substance uh because it's the decomposed nutrients that the compressed uh nutrients so to speak of 1500 different types of plants that have 
basically decomposed over 60,000 years. So wow. a massive amount of antioxidant properties in that substance. And that uh, substance has done done wonders for, you know, if we're talking athletic performance, we're talking uh, people's, uh, people's running times, swim times, recovery times, uh, combat athletes, even power lifters are, are able to uh, do much more intense workouts, more weight, more reps, and increase their maxes uh, exponentially uh, because their muscles are uh, at a cellular level full of oxygen. They're also full of usable colloidal nutrients that the mitochondria can use to burn as fuel to generate energy within the cell. Um, the NIH studies are endless regarding antioxidants having the ability to go in and remove synthetic chemicals and heavy metals out of the cells, uh, as well as uh, repair damaged DNA, which is obviously very important right now, considering what is going on with all the toxins in our environment, uh, you know, the, the chemicals that are used to grow our food, the, the uh, manufacturing chemicals, I mean, just underarm deodorants and shampoos with aluminums and parabens and all kinds of garbage in them. You know, people need to be paying attention to that. But ultimately, we are constantly, your tap water alone has massive amounts of pharmaceutical and agriculture chemicals in it oh, yeah. that do not, get, do not get cleaned out when uh, they do water purification. Therefore, your children and you, if you're drinking tap water or taking in everyone's pharmaceuticals from upstream, uh, as well as all the farmers, and you, you don't that have to is causing massive, massive uh, physical, hormonal, and mental damage to Americans. Yeah. And uh, so those are technically, you know, the the uh, fungicides, pesticides, and herbicides are failed antibiotics. Yeah. Uh, you know that they're now dumping by the billions of gallons on our soil. Uh, that's going to end up in our water and our food and everything else. And so then you have side effects from those. You know, you see a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical commercial on TV, and they talk about the side effects for half the commercial. That's coming from your food, your water, uh, soil, air. You know, so then you've got side effects, and then you go to a guy in a white lab coat to give you more synthetic chemicals for your side effects. It's a, it's <laughs> yeah. a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's absolutely. I feel like I'm. Uh, this nation has turned into. Uh, I feel like Jack Nicholson and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. And it's important to note that uh, you don't even have to be consuming your tap water, drinking your tap water. It's you're going to breathe it in in the shower. You take a hot shower, that soaking steam, it, soaking you're soaking it. your skin in it and you're breathing it into your lungs. Your skin is going, your skin is going to absorb a massive amount yeah. uh, into your body. Your skin does that. It breathes. Your skin breathes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. a whole house water filter is not a bad idea, especially if you are water uh from your town yeah if you have town water mm -hmm. and it's toxic like i'm in my town yeah. our water's awful my skin's never been worse well not even just that the the government agencies that get uh applauded for pumping chemicals in yeah fluoride fluoride, fluoride. they get uh, metals on their chest for things like that yeah well and that's the thing is if we look at agenda 21 agenda 30 written into that plan we were covering that years ago on our podcast that if uh, land, air, or water become too toxic uh, for you know humans to live in that area, the rule is is that states, counties, and municipalities cannot uh, stop you know the movement of a massive amount of human beings into uh, different geographical areas, thereby just taking huge swaths of land. Yeah, um, you know, and and that's what we specialize in now is being able to uh, reclaim land in a matter of 30, 60 days. Um, when we treat toxic soil, you know, we're able to convert those heavy metals and synthetic chemicals into uh, essential fatty acids that are then bioavailable and, and beneficial to plant life and any animals that would happen to eat them and, you know, the plants. And, and so uh, on up the chain, on up the, the food chain, of course. So, that's the major problem. The biggest problem we have in this nation right now is the soil um, because the soil has been, you know, murdered of all the microbes, the bacterias and, and mycelium that uh, are, are responsible for breaking down those toxins and heavy metals and converting them to 
life force energy minerals, right? So I can put mm-hmm. zinc and magnesium and all these different metals into my body from a uh, multivitamin mineral supplement. But more more than likely, about at least 95% of the time, anything I pull off the shelf at a grocery store or even health food store, um, the vitamins in it are going to be synthetic, which are damaging. Yeah. And then the, you know, the minerals in it, the metals are going to be basically uh, heavy metal forms, which are damaging as well. So you're taking something you think is for your health when it's actually not doing you any good at all and very likely harming you. So we have to be able to understand, Americans need to understand the difference in the form that the nutrients are. So if they have not been converted by microorganisms, if the oxygen molecule has not been stripped off through that digestion process and a carbon molecule put onto that magnesium, zinc, uh, even aluminum, lead, all those things, um, it's it's going to be harmful generally. It's not going to be good for you. Yes, You're not going to yeah. absorb it. So when we talk about um, like like the synthetic supplements, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of B12, most of the B12 that's out there mm-hmm. is derived from the cyanide molecule. Really? Yeah. So, not all so if you look at if you look at any type of um, supplements with B12, it'll be like a cyano something or other. Yeah. Like a yeah. Big long Dan, can you look that up? Cyano, it's something like that. Um, <laughs> avoid that yeah. at all costs. Yeah. There's other ways to get B12 into your system besides using something that's taken from cyanide yeah um but they're yeah they're they're poisoning us and i want to touch on uh pat something that you just alluded to real quick you said that you're working on ways that you can heal the soil and you got very scientific and i imagine that you're working with uh teams of people um this means that you're going up against the people responsible for agenda 21 and agenda 30 going up against the matrix let's say what the globalists the globalists like elites who are trying to perpetrate this on us mm-hmm. what are you are, does that make you nervous like what is your what is your plan to to counter what is going to surely be their attack once you get rolling no we're not against them here's what i say to people say for instance in uh you know the agriculture world conventional agriculture, you know, there's uh, a lot of people in that industry, a lot of people in the medical medical industry. Um, you know, there's a lot of really good people in those industries, right? And they're very intelligent. There's a lot of extremely intelligent. I've talked to probably by now thousands of them, um, supremely intelligent human beings who depend on that paycheck to take care of their children, pay the house bill, car uh and they're eventually going to depend on that pension right yeah so so what we're, what i say to those people is and i've had conversations with some some very high up you know folks in the medical industry and, and agriculture industry and uh you know for me i have to feel compassion for those people because they're very good people who got into it with to you know they endeavored to do great things and they are uh, great spirits, good spirits, um, who love their children very much, who are caught in very difficult situations, very difficult, um, very difficult systems, right? So what what I simply do is I tell them, number one, I, I empathize with them. I understand that you are in a very difficult situation. But I want you to look into your children's eyes and look look at the beauty in your children's eyes. And we have to ask ourselves, are we willing in the short term to make sure that we pay their bills, uh, get them to school, um, get them through their soccer or whatever sport they're in, enjoy that time with them uh, while making that paycheck uh, and get them off to college and adulthood and all of that? Because that short term is, is what everybody's just scrambling to do out of fear right out of fear right Right. but it is the long term the the condemnation of the world we're going to leave them if we do not replace the old toolbox um you know in uh you know conventional agriculture or uh, allopathic medicine all of these people are so intelligent they can do a soil test and they know exactly what the soil needs they can do diagnostics on human beings 
and know what that person needs. All we're doing is, is explaining that you can remove the toolbox that you've been using and roll in a new, new toolbox. So right now, uh, you know, a lot of those folks, the vast majority of folks in agriculture and medicine have a roll of duct tape and a butter knife to fix a Maserati. Right. And we, we want to roll in the proper tool set for them to actually take care of the soil create living organisms in the soil, create organic matter in the soil. And when you do that, you know, you have to understand for every 1% of organic matter in one acre of soil, that's 20,000 gallons of water that soil will hold. So in one acre with 10% more organic matter, that's 200,000 gallons of water. That's water that didn't run off into streams and rivers and away from that area geographically. Uh, and then you don't get the evaporation rates and then you don't get the precipitation rates that you're supposed to have to be able to truly grow, you know, nutrient rich food. So um, that's how you create, that's how you turn North America into a desert. And they're in the process yeah. of that right now uh, by using, you know, synthetic chemicals. That's what's happening. So, so is this a product that um, you're, you're developing that you can offer to like even a small farms, I have a small six acre farm. Um, then this is how I, how I know that the organic, um, label is garbage. It doesn't mean anything because when I went to make my farm organic, all they wanted was my money. They didn't even care. They said, Oh, what do you use? And then they were going to take my word for it. And they didn't even care to come and check out the farm. They just wanted a whole bunch of money so that I could give them, um, so, so that they could take my money so that I could get the organic label. Now, if you do have a product, what is going to keep somebody from like Monsanto? Because, uh, I mean, or, or whoever makes glyphosate and all these other horrible compounds that they're putting all over our, our, our food and into our soil, what's to keep them from coming after you um, legally or, or in, in any way? Well, we're not, we're not trying to compete with them. They can do what they, can do what they want. Um, you know, I think that, you know, they've reached a point now where when I talk to conventional agriculture experts, their, their products are, are not working anymore. Uh, they're having problems with pests. They're having problems with weeds. They're having, you know, they're having some major issues. Um, so look, ultimately when you grow with synthetics, you, you're growing synthetic plants, synthetic plants have no immune system. Right. Therefore you have to kill everything in the soil. You have to kill nature. Uh, so that your plant does not get killed by nature. Right. So you, so you disinfect the soil, so to speak, like an operating room. Right. Yeah. So, um, but at some point, the the bugs fight back. They become right. resistant. Right. Right. Nature is always more powerful than man-made uh, synthetics. Right. So we've reached that cycle where their products are starting to fail pretty badly, and. Farmers are now looking for real answers and uh, out of necessity, but also they're waking up to reality that you either work with nature and, and succeed, truly succeed, right? or you work against nature and you you will eventually fail. Right. You will eventually fail miserably. So uh, biodynamic agriculture is the working with nature, uh, educating farmers how to work with nature. And thereby creating much bigger yields, uh, you know, collecting carbon credits. My goodness, if they're going to turn a monetary system, uh, uh, create a monetary system out of carbon, well, we can help you do that. We can help you do that because that is the, uh, you know, if I explain to somebody how much how much uh, nitrogen do you think is in our atmosphere? Take a guess. I want to say it's high. I know it's like 30 percent ish maybe is that okay anybody else i was gonna say 27 but i'm trying to oh wow it's a lot more than that yeah no, oh, i'm not sure how much you got did you google it yeah i'm yeah. uh i'm on google right now um it's a wikipedia page but um it says 78 percent. holy smokes wow. is that accurate yeah so so this is what we try to this is what we try to educate people about is why are we putting any nitrogen mm -hmm. or ammonia anything into the soil 
when we have 78% nitrogen in our atmosphere and, and all the other elements as well, right? So those living microscopic organisms are able to convert say we'll just use nitrogen since so it's so plentiful into colloidal forms of ammonia that are then bioavailable to the plants to grow right so when you mass murder the soil you eliminate the ability for the soil to do that to pull those those uh nutrients those substances elements out of the atmosphere and feed plants um so we're just re-educating people on what farmers did for thousands of years right this is knowledge that was educated out of americans uh at agronomy schools and you know horticulturalists and, and things like that who who thought that you have to add things to the soil in that matter uh to to get crops to grow that's not the case at all right so so we're just re-educating everyone um and using god's formula uh nature's formula and working with nature uh, to grow massive yields, if that's what you want to do. Uh, very nutrient-dense food. And those nutrients are in the right form. They are colloidal forms of nutrients that have had the carbon uh, attached, the carbon molecule attached, the oxygen molecule stripped off. No longer a free radical. And uh, and that's how you that's how you get healthy. That's how you create a tomato that tastes literally like candy. Right. And your taste buds are telling you you're finally eating something that is life sustaining. That's what that's what this is about. Nice. All right, Pat. Um, um give me one minute here. We're gonna we gotta take a quick break. Um, I know you're short for time, but we just have to figure out what's going on with our zoom on this end. Just give us one minute. All right, and we right, are so we got, back. Uh, Twenty seven minutes. All right, perfect. Let's bang this out. We are back with okay. technical difficulties with the Zoom. So let's continue on um, on this route that we were on. Um, we we had talked before, and you had mentioned um, that the detriment to our soil isn't just in our agriculture, but it's spreading to our forests, where our forests are um, being destroyed by bugs. Yeah, among among other things, obviously the immune systems of the forests are being affected from you know herbicide drift, but more so I think from uh, evaporation rates that are taking the herbicides, um, fungicides, and pesticides up into the rain, and then dropping them down onto uh, the forests right. in precipitation. The immune system of the forest, you know, is is failing. And therefore, the bugs, you know, because plants will give off natural enzymes when they're when they have an immune system, they'll give off natural enzymes that inhibit bugs from wanting to eat them. Yep. And uh, you know, with those immune systems knocked down like they are, then the bugs are are starting to, uh, yeah, chew on the chew on the trees, kill the trees, and then the folks at the forestry department they see the bugs and they don't recognize why the bugs are able to eat the trees. And so they call in the helicopters and planes and start spraying pesticides on our forests, which obviously are going to kill the bugs that are eating the trees, but it's also going to kill the butterflies, the bees, and every other every other bug uh, potentially in there, and lower the immune system even more of the forest. So it's it's uh, uh, spiraling the uh, toilet drain, so to speak, for uh, human intelligence right now right, is, yeah. is where we're at. So what what you're working on is going to be, I mean, a multi-industry fix if if you can get it onto enough land. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's always going to be those who are going to do, you know, they're going to stick with, uh, you know, what brought them to the dance. Um, how, how that works out for them is their business. You know, uh, what, I guess what we're focused on is, is folks who are forward thinkers, who see the problem, who want to correct the problem and who want to build a better world for their children. You know, that's what this comes down to. So, um, you know, we can either fix, uh, you know, that's what I had to do to heal, uh, my respiratory issues. My inflammation in my respiratory system was feed my body, the nutrients, uh, that it was supposed to have, and also clean out 
you know, the heavy metals and synthetics out of my body that was that was uh, basically the drivers of of that inflammation, a combination of toxicity and lack of of real nutrients in my body. And so, uh, you know, if we do that for almost pretty much every living organism, plants, you know, all these things, generally they will take care of their own, take yeah. care of their own health. They'll, they'll figure out a way uh, to, to fix themselves. That's, that's just, right. that's how nature works. Mm -hmm. Now, was this a part of your camp in, in your MMA days when you were building these high level athletes of like um, detoxing them from these heavy metals and getting them to a uh, physical state of like harmony? Yeah. Almost like a nutrition program. Yeah. Or something. Sure. Sure. I mean, early on, I did not understand the mechanisms. I just knew that it was an observable difference yeah. in endurance, strength, uh, recovery, you know, all of those things. So I, I had started to dig into the science, you know, of it all, obviously, after a while, because I was, you know, you want to know, you want to learn. That's just uh, right. the why. You, know, yep. you have to find out why things are happening. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are people sick? You know, you have to look at what's causing people to get sick, for instance, to be able recognizing and understanding the problem or understanding your enemy uh, and understanding yourself is how you win victories. Right. right. Yeah. So that's why we do game plans against opponents for fights, for sure. football games. Mm -hmm. That's why we watch film. Right. Right. So we have to understand our enemy. If you don't understand your enemy um, and yourself. Right. So our enemy in this environment right now, synthetic chemicals and heavy metals. Let's just say that. Yep. Um, and knowing ourselves, well, my my body could be very nutrient deficient and full of toxins. Right. So I have to know both of those things, know my enemy, know myself to be able to win that victory for my health. And that's that's just, you know, the way that I guess I've always looked at looked at things, so to speak. Right. That's a great way to look at it. All right, Pat. And so now I have a note here where you were talking about um, the uh, fulvic humic acid um, healing DNA. Um, and you touched antioxidants. on antioxidants. The antioxidants. Anti antioxidants, um, run of the mill antioxidants are capable of doing that really? through NIH studies. Yeah. That's not my that's not my data. That's not my research. That's the National Institute of Health Studies. So we just went through in this country a time where many good people were force injected mm -hmm. with a substance that alters DNA. Are you saying that through this method it's possible to correct that damage? I can tell you that the National Institute of Health Studies show that DNA can be repaired through antioxidants. Wow. Um, that's their, again, that's their studies. That is not my studies, not my data that is theirs. And do you have a product that you would recommend um, to people? Because, I mean, there's, there's, there's fulvic humic acid in many different forms. Many different companies yeah, have it. Sheila Jeet got a popular. Yeah. Popular um, in one. Do you have a recommended source for this so we know it's clean? It's not being made. It's not has no pesticides and and stuff in it. Do you, do you have a source for this? Yeah, we have a pristine source of uh, that comes from a from a very remote location in the world. Uh, it is uh, peat bog derived. It is not from a coal deposit. It is not from a dead seafloor bed it is not oozing out of the side of a mountain mm -hmm. in him in the himalayas it is a living uh giant organism uh with microorganisms present those sixty thousand year old pristine microorganisms that are very very important in the conversion of again uh heavy metals and synthetics into essential fatty acids bioavailable nutrients yeah and so this is this is the again the if if our soil was all alive and full of these microorganisms uh, converting all of the toxins into nutrients, you have to understand that when it did rain, that runoff would end up in the water. What's going to happen to the water at that point? It's the water is going to start to heal. Yeah, right? it's going to heal. Then the evaporation rates. Then the rain is going to start to heal. Mm -hmm. And anything that the rain falls down on containing these uh, nutrients and microorganisms is going to heal it's going to be healing so we could uh i mean when we look at 
uh, if we could treat enough soil, we could pretty much heal the country pretty quickly. Yeah, and yep. Uh, we could heal the plants, we could heal the crops, we could heal uh, the animals, and we could heal human beings um, of of the of the blight that they've uh, that we're all experiencing. Right. Yeah. So if we if we were able to heal the soil in this way and it had that um, that blossoming effect, there would be no need for the antioxidants in the body. Well, not no need, but maybe not as much of a need. Well, be, well, well, that's when we go back to let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Yeah. That's the way it was always, that's the way it was always intended. But um, with the use of, of, of synthetics, that's, you know, obviously not happening anymore. And when people wonder, you know, that's, that's the problem is that, you know, it's the question of does heart, does heart disease or, and I've never, you know, it's been years since I, uh, disease does not exist. We have to first come to that understanding. Okay. There's no such thing as disease. It is just different manifestations of inflammation caused by the impurities from our environment, getting into our bodies, our cells, right? Okay. So uh, different manifestations. So that's really what this comes down to. And go back to your question again, because I got off on a tangent. So. Um, I, I, I just said that there would be no need necessarily for the fulvic humic right. acid. If you, if we were able to heal the soil, which would in turn blossom into healing of our water and healing of our, our land and as a whole, then all the, all, all the vegetables and fruit that you ate, all the animals that you ate, um, all of that would have, you know, bioavailable nutrients in the plant, in the meats. Yeah. And, uh, would thereby just transfer into your body, into right. your cells, and that's how that's how healthy life, uh, vibrant life, is created. Yep. Um, where can I go and buy this? This uh, our website isn't even up yet. Uh, we've 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 uh, reformulating right now um, with an, another line of products, but we've uh, got a new uh, new domain which will be mineralking.life. That will be up actually in hopefully within a week. Oh, nice. Uh, so people will be able to go there and purchase uh, purchase the product. That's huge. Great. And, we'll... and that, that is a, you know, this is a, this is, a, this is a private club membership. So you first have to join the club. Yeah. Uh, to be able to get access to these, um, this level of product, because we we want people who are educated. We want people who truly care about their children and care about their own health. Um, this is not the, the run of the mill, walk in the grocery store, grab your whey protein and your uh, multivitamin mineral off the shelf and think you're covering your, your, your health. Right. That's, we don't, we're not, we're not really, we're, we're not marketing to those folks. We're marketing to folks who truly um, are digging into the research and educating themselves on creating a different level of existence for them and their children. Yeah. And, um, I would like, I mean, our military men and women, our law enforcement, our frontline healthcare workers who are force jabbed. Yeah. I would love for them to hear this episode about how, it, how they can use this product to reverse these negative effects. Yeah. And then because a lot well, of, we don't, we don't, we don't make, any we don't make any claims right let me be clear uh because because there is no such thing as a disease we do not talk about that our goal is this to to remove the toxic substances from the environment from the body to allow the body and of course put very high grade nutrients into the body yep. to allow the body to address its own issues that is we do not cure, treat, prevent anything because right. again, those things that they've given names to do not exist. Mm -hmm. That's right. not, I, like I do that. not okay. recognize that at all. So that's, that's very important to delineate uh, the difference in that. So we, we just want to put the nutrients into the body that allow the body to do what it needs to do to remain in homeostasis, that balance between good and bad okay. uh, in the body that allows us to walk around and live a great life. Nice. I like that. So how does one become a member of the club once once uh, you're you back can, up and running? You'll, you'll, you'll be uh there'll be a there'll be a uh, uh, a link that you'll be able to click on to join that club. Yeah. 
and uh, and fill out that that information, and then uh, then we're off to the races. Then we're off to the races. But you know, uh, one of the biggest buyers of the of this product, of course, uh, endurance athletes, ultra runners, swimmers, uh, combat athletes. You know, a lot of those types of people. Uh, we've seen amazing, amazing results. We've seen guys, a lot of guys, uh, some some of my friends actually in their fifties, uh, ultra runners, guys that can run a hundred miles yeah. in one day. You know, those, those guys have been running for decades and in their fifties, all of a sudden are dropping a minute to a minute and a half off their per mile time on, you know, 20 and 30 mile training runs and their heart rates going down 30 beats a minute at the same time. Wow. That's so, impressive. So in their really 50, in their fifties, they're going a lot faster and their heart rates going down. Right. So, so that, uh, that'll that's tell massive. you the level of, of nutrients that are going into their bodies. Well, I can't wait to try it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for sure. Um, yeah. It blew my mind. What are, are there, are there any risks or side effects associated with, um, taking a product like this? Well, there's going to be, you know, um, you want to start slow. Obviously there's a detox effect the bad's going to come out of you as the good goes in. Um, so there may be some, um, jet black, um, jet black stools. Um, some, some have gotten, you know, some diarrhea, jet mm-hmm. black diarrhea, uh, while it's cleaning off their intestinal walls. And, uh, some people will feel lethargic, uh, for, you know, two, three, four days, uh, mm-hmm. while their cells are, uh, potentially in their bodies are cleaning out the toxins. So, right. but once you, once you get past that detox phase, which there's a lot of people across this country that have detoxed, but, the detox phase is if you're detoxing, you need to be replacing uh, instantly the bad with the good yeah. um, so that your cells, your cells and your body's not not screaming and searching for more metals that, you know, if there's nothing available, it's going to pull bad back in. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, should we be taking something in conjunction with this? Uh, there's a lot of substances that you can take with it. I mean, I, I recommend people take, uh, you know, um, uh, a good organic vitamin C, okay. uh, with it for immune function. Yeah. Um, this, this substance by itself is going to help with immune function. Uh, the vitamin organic forms of vitamin C certainly are going to help. And there's, there's other products that my business partner, doc, will Spencer, uh, will put in conjunction with this for gut health and things like that. So it's, you know, but overall, what I've what I've recognized over 35 years is that if you you address gut health and gut biome balance yeah. and cellular function, mitochondrial function, you're you're a pretty high functioning uh, human. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. So, well, excellent. I, I mean that that that's all I've really that's all I really got for you. Yeah. No, he blew me okay. away. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean. That crushes it. We will put a link in the description um, to that site for when it is live. And I will let my audience know when you do c- go live, let me know. Cause I'm going to buy some, I want to try it for sure. Um, do you guys work out a lot yeah. every day? Yeah. Good. So now you can, uh, once you get started on it, wait about a week uh, and then s- start to really ramp up your endurance work. All right. Yeah. And I think you'll, I think you'll start noticing some differences. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah I'm, I'm excited about that. I can't wait to try it. Um, I'm excited as well. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you one question. Okay. And this might, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to respond to it, but how good did it feel to punch that kid in his face last year and drop him on his ground, drop him on his back? Uh, you know, it, it felt it good for good, me to watch. Well, for me, you know, at 57, my, my mistake was I wasn't in my thirties, twenties, thirties or forties so, anymore. Right? Yeah. This kid was 20 uh, years younger than you. So, um, I didn't even jog a single mile for that fight, yeah. uh, which I always used to do. I took him so lightly that I, I just thought I'm going to finish him in a minute anyway. I don't. <laughs> so uh, because of that, I had to cut 18 pounds the day before. Yikes. Um, wow. And so I, I really damaged myself pretty severely by doing that. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so it, it, it made things a little rougher to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
even though I won the first two rounds, I was not able. I literally, I, I had no electricity going through my body at all. Yeah. I was hitting, I was hitting hypoxia a minute, uh, literally a minute into the fight. Um, so, so it was a, a very uh, stupid thing for me to do. That's something that, you know, that all falls on me. But it was personal for you. Well, yeah, I think, um, I think anybody would have done the same thing. Can- well, it just, it comes down to this. It comes down to this is, are we going to stand up for our children or, or, or aren't we? And I think everybody thinks they're standing up for their children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but when we really dig in into the research and we learn the truth about what's going on in this country yeah. um, and the intended goals for what, what those on the left and the right might not understand is that by fighting with each other, they are assisting um, the machine yeah. uh, that, that that has designed and and uh, <clears throat> helped instigate the fight yeah. uh, amongst Americans. So, you know, it comes down to there's only one true health. There's only uh, one true reality um, in yeah. terms of uh, living a, a good life, caring about other human beings, caring about, you know, your fellow Americans caring about clean soil, caring about clean water, clean air, uh, nutrient rich food. Um, if everyone was eating nutrient rich food and drinking truly clean chemical free water, uh, none of this would be possible. None of the manipulation would be possible. Right. So that's what I try to help people understand is that, uh, the, you can only manipulate sick and scared people. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so they keep yourself healthy. Get yourself get yourself healthy. Um, do some research and uh, stop fighting with your neighbor. That's awesome. Pat. I love it. Appreciate it. That's perfect. That's perfect to end on, Pat. Thank you so much, man. Okay, thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Appreciate you, Pat. Take care. Take care. Bye. All right, guys. That was Pat Militich. Holy smokes! Wow, I was not expecting. He's that. got a lot going on. Not only is he the Croatian sensation. The Croatian sensation and a beast in the ring, but he has got a lot of exciting, interesting things going on. And knowledge, a lot of knowledge. In the present and the future. Mm-hmm. Now, did you see the fight that I referenced at the end there? Yeah, yeah. He came back at, I think, 55. 57. It was last year. It was last October. Yeah. This this kid, I've, can you look up what this kid's name is? I can. A it was, punk. Uh, it was Mike yeah. Jackson. Mike, yes. Some, something Jackson. Yeah. An absolute punk yeah right yeah pat's training him mm-hmm. for the ufc he was a ufc plant oh, i didn't know that i didn't know basically that. Yeah. right because he got a contract with the ufc being zero and one or something yeah. like that yeah. like you don't that doesn't happen yeah. unless you're a plant yeah especially in what it's and at the time all the ufc fighters and they still a lot of them are mm-hmm. like at the time they had like Hor- Hor- uh, jorge masvidal like all these right an animal right leaning conservative guys speaking openly yep. so they plant this loser lefty in there yeah right pat's training him up mm-hmm. and then the relationship between pat and him goes sour yeah um basically that dude cost pat his his career yeah and so they set up a fight and then and just like to know the whole history behind that and yeah, to so much better and to see Pat at almost double this kid's age, yeah. just drop him. Yeah. Uh, there was, I was, but he, he makes a good point too, which is, you know, that's exactly what they want. Yeah. So he, he, he's not, didn't seem to me like he was proud of that, but still coming off the, well, I think if he got the win, he might be a little bit more, but coming off the couch to drop a kid like that. Yeah. Is, who's a current UFC fighter. Yeah. In current shape. Yeah. Yeah, this article that I have right now, it says he, uh, Militich would dominate most of the fight, but he didn't yeah. make it to the third round. Like, Yeah, he just, but, and he explains. Yeah, yeah, but from off the couch to yeah. knocking a dude basically out. Who's a current UFC fighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, like, like I said at the top of the episode, a titan inside and outside of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> he was at the January 6th in D.C. Yeah. And that's what started this whole thing was that this kid, Johnson, this mm-hmm. punk, lefty race baiting lunatic yeah like exposed i'll put that in quotes yeah him at at the the rally and yeah, called him a domestic terrorist and all this stuff him. he was posing for pictures with people yeah there. right yeah. like yeah. you have a i have every right to be there yeah i didn't go into the capital yeah 
You know what I mean? I, I wasn't one of those people. Yeah. But that was that was great. <clears throat> that was a great chat. You got anything to add to that? We will link in the description uh, to Mineral King dot life if you guys are interested in that i know he was reluctant to talk about the um jab yeah stuff which i get because there's a whole bunch of legal well, yeah, reasons why yeah, ramifications to behind that but from what i understand this stuff is the closest yeah taking this stuff is the closest way to being back to like returning your body to pre jab yeah, i want to say it's about seven years it takes for your body uh your dna changes yeah. by itself every around every seven years yeah to combine that with it, you're resetting in a healthier way and yeah. hopefully speeding up the process. Yeah. So it's a great product. He's got, I mean, just the, the soil health and how it's like the way to heal yeah. everything. Yeah. I hope that it's wild. It'll be huge. I don't see, see, he was, he didn't want to say, I mean, this could be my tinfoil hat yeah, I'm with type, you already. Of, type yeah. of mindset, yeah. but like, there's no way, there's no way the people who are hell bent on destroying our farmland yep. are going to allow him just to waltz in and heal it all. No, they're monetizing the destruction of yeah, farmers and farmland. Exactly. Yeah. And he's going to step in Fix and them. cut all their, their business yeah. out yeah. from all these farms. Farm I don't know how that's going to, they're connected to pharmaceutical companies too. I these know issues that they're creating, they're fixing through yeah. the pharmaceuticals. Cause yeah. they fix the, they fix the, or they treat the um, symptom yeah. instead of the cause of the problem. That's yeah. what our health industry does. And they create more problems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think, I, I think he might be in for a bigger fight than he thinks with that. Yeah. Especially. I hope not. But I hope yeah. not, too. But especially if he starts, like, tacking on thousands and thousands of acres and pulling large farms yeah. from the glyphosates and all the people who are manufacturing all these yeah. pesticides and herbicides. Yeah. There's no way that they don't come for you. No. The atrazines, the yeah. fluoridization, all that stuff. Yeah. No shot. Yep. All right. Pretty awesome. That was cool. Pretty awesome to have him on. Yeah, it was awesome. All right. Um, guys, you can find us at the real grip podcast.com. Um, all of our episodes are on there. You can find us Spotify rumble, uh, YouTube, all that stuff. But what I need from you guys is, especially if you follow us on TikTok, because I'm one strike away from being banned from that platform, <laughs> follow us on free platforms like X. If you watch us on YouTube, stop. Start watching us on Rumble yeah. or Spotify because they're not, they're not allowing us through that algorithm. No. Um, free platforms, even Instagram, I'm sure we're short on. Yeah. And that's the one that's seeing the most growth right now. But if you guys can go over, follow us on X, Rumble, Spotify. Those are the safe platforms. That's where we need you guys to be. I'm not just saying. TikTok's about to be banned too. Yeah. yeah just pass somewhere. Um, I'm not just saying next. I want you to follow us. I want more followers. Just follow us across all platforms so you can always find us. Because we are going to be kicked off of anything meta. And we're going to get kicked off of TikTok. For sure. Fast. And there's 23,000 of you on TikTok. So just come on over. Um. Also, if you haven't already, leave us a Spotify review. Mm -hmm. Five-star review will go a long way if we make you laugh, if we make you sad, if we, if we make you mad, if you learn something, yeah. if you feel anything after watching the show, please leave us a review on Spotify. And that's all I got. This time for real. Yep. <laughs> all right. Listen, guys, we love you. Stay gritty. Stop. Screw Go home. Go Touchdown like the end zone When the circle turn to my home Can't get me out of my zone Go hard Go hard Go hard Go hard Go 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 hard Yeah These championship rings on my hands now In my head I'm top 10 Yeah this hands down You a squad squad Now you're looking man down Funny high foes to the friends now